Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at this project here, but more specifically focusing on glass shaders in Cinema 4D and Redshift. We're gonna be looking at building a glass shader from scratch and we're gonna talk through the different parameters that you can change to affect the result of your glass. We're then gonna to briefly touch on caustics as well as one additional thing you can do to boost the realism of your glass. So this should be a fun video and hopefully it will be a helpful one. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. So we're in Cinema 4D and let's just quickly jump out of our camera so I can show you what's going on in this scene. We have this camera with a really high focal length of 300 millimeters, which essentially is flattening the perspective and giving us this quite graphical look, which I think works quite well for this scene. We then have one area light, which is actually lighting the whole scene. Uh, we're using this Grayscale Gorilla Window Gobo, which is helping to give us this window lighting and just help to add some more additional interest to the scene. Uh, we then have a couple mega scans assets, um, some cylinders, some spheres, some text, and then a wall and a floor. So a pretty simple scene setup in general, but obviously all the magic is happening in the glass shaders. So let's just go straight ahead and create a new redshift material. We're gonna drag this onto our text. And let's just quickly enable our render region and we can obviously move this around and scale it just to focus on the text here so that we can preview it a bit quicker. And let's dive into our material. Okay, so we've got this gray plastic material and obviously that's not what we want. So I'm gonna come up to preset and select glass and we've got a really good starting point for our material. Obviously this isn't the final result and it's not the result we want. So I'm gonna go through each parameter one by one and kind of explain what they do and hopefully by the end we'll have a really nice colorful glass material. So let's start off with IOR. What does that stand for? That stands for index of refraction. Now, I can't really go too deep in the science of it because I'm not a scientist, but I can briefly, hopefully, tell you what I understand of how it works. And that is essentially, if you imagine the light hitting the object, it's coming in from the right hand side here, the IOR will affect how the distortion of that light works. So imagine it comes in and it bounces and exits at this angle. The higher you turn this IOR up, the more obscure the angle is. So it's gonna come in and say bounce off of this. But if we turn this down to one, you can see our object is now invisible and that's because the light is passing straight through it without bending or distorting. Now, if we start to increase this by 0 0.01, you can start to see our object come back into play. The light is starting to bend, it's starting to distort through our object, and that essentially is how you build that glass material. Now, if we just go back up to 1.5 or 1, you can see now kind of how that works. The light is coming in, it's distorting and it's bouncing, and it's leaving in a different direction. So that's how you're getting that distortion through the glass. Hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully that is kind of a decent explanation. Again, I'm not a scientist, I don't know the ins and outs, um, you can go and Google that if you'd like to. So we have this IOR of 1.5 and also I do just quickly want to mention there's this really good website called pixelandpoly.com. It's got this index of refraction list for essentially any material or object you can think of. So if you were creating diamond, for example, you know the IOR is 2.418. Um, if you were making beer, 1.345, the list goes on and on. Um, but this is a really good starting point for kind of knowing roughly what the IOR of different materials are. So we've got the IOR here, 1.51, and it's really good because by default, Redshift is gonna link your refraction to your reflection. So what we're actually changing here is the IOR for the reflection, but because it's linked, it's gonna affect the refraction as well. If I was to disable this, I can now change this IOR, and the IOR refraction isn't gonna change, it's just changing the IOR of the reflection. I'm actually just gonna leave this linked and just make sure I change this to the right setting. And there you go. So that's really powerful. You're able to either, you know, affect those together or change them separately and get some really interesting results. Another great option they've given us is this option here called Thin Walled. Now imagine you were creating something like a glass pane or like a car window where there actually isn't any distortion really. You know, if you look out your window, you can see everything perfectly fine. This Thin Walled option is going to allow you to recreate that. Essentially when you enable it, what it's gonna do is take out any depth of your object and just remove any distortion because by default, you know, obviously we have this IOR of 1.5, the light's coming in, it's bouncing off, it's giving us all this distortion. So this thin wall is essentially gonna remove that. So if we just enable it, 
you can see we can see straight through our object now. And the only reason we're actually getting this kind of like blurred finish is because we do have some depth to our object in the actual extrude of the text. But you can see it's removed all distortion and it does actually look like a glass pane here. So that's a really cool tool here. Um, you can use it if you want to create like a plastic bottle or obviously a glass window. I'm going to disable that again and get back to our glass material. And let's start to creep in some of that color. But before we do, I'm going to come up to the roughness and just change this to 0 0.3. And because we have this link to reflection box ticked, it's going to affect the refraction and the reflection. So now we have this kind of frosted glass feel, which is really nice because it's helping to separate the foreground element to the background because now we've actually blurred it a little bit. It's really easy to separate those two objects. So let's start to creep in some of that color like I mentioned and that is done really easily through this tool here called dispersion. Again, I'm no scientist but from what I understand, if you imagine the light coming in, when we increase this dispersion it's going to split some of the colors, kind of like a chromatic aberration effect and it's going to give us the result we're seeing in these discs here. Uh, so let's increase this to something like 43 you can start to see we're getting some color creep into our glass. Obviously that's super noisy at the moment so we can't see too well, but you can kind of see some color creeping in. Now, you would think the more you increase the dispersion amount, the more color you would see, but it's actually the opposite way. So if we start to decrease this, let's go down to 20. You can start to see some more color creep in and let's just crank this all the way down to one. And now we're getting a really colorful finish. And these are actually the values I used for the glass material in the final piece. Now a better way to display how dispersion works is actually to look at one of these cylinders because as you can tell these are all completely different colors but this isn't because they've got different materials it's actually just from the dispersion. So I'm going to close this material quickly and just select this cylinder and you can see as I start to rotate this cylinder around it's actually changing the color of that cylinder. So the dispersion is all working on the angle of the light and how the color is then being dispersed through that object. Essentially that is everything you kind of need to know in terms of glass materials. Um, I think that basically covers the basics. So you can see that now we've got a really colorful glass. The, the piece is looking pretty much like the final one, but you'll notice that one thing is missing. If we go up to our window and our picture viewer, you can see this is our final render. And in our render view here, we're actually missing these splashes of color we're getting here. And these are called caustics. Now, from what I understand, caustics are created by light shining through these refractive and reflective objects and basically being dispersed onto the ground. Um, if you look at any images of bottles, you get those really nice light rays on the floor, um, especially if it's like a sunny day and the sun's coming through the window. Um, you get those really cool results. Now I'm going to talk briefly on how to set up these core sticks, but if you want a deeper dive into it, I suggest going to check out Zach's channel, uh, another really great guy putting out awesome tutorials. Uh, he's just got this video here called Great Looking Core Sticks in Redshift, 50 minutes long, so it's a super deep dive into the topic. Go check it out if you want to know more, but I'm going to quickly show you guys how you can set it up. So I'm just going to close this down. So the first thing you're going to want is a area light or a spotlight, which has a really kind of narrow um, focus. So this spread on this area light is 0 0.01. So it's really focused on one particular point. Again, it would be the same if you used a spotlight. If you use a dome light, you're not going to get the result you want because the light is too diffused throughout your scene. You really need something which is almost like a spotlight. So once you've got your area light or your spotlight, whatever you want to use, you need to come into the details tab and enable caustic photons. Now these aren't the default parameters. Um, I've bumped up the intensity to two and actually this I believe I actually had set to 50 million. Uh, I believe that's five million, yeah, so an extra zero. Um, by default it's gonna be 100,000 as you just saw. So you really do need to crank up the values in order to get smooth results. This is gonna be dependent on your scene and your light and your glass materials. Um, but you do need to use quite high values because it's quite intensive on your system. Uh, the next thing you need to do is go to the object that you want to cast the photons. So let's just say this text, for example, and you're gonna to wanna to add a redshift object tag by just going to redshift tags and redshift object and coming into the visibility, overriding it and enabling this casts caustic photons. And from that, you should be good to go. It's just a case of 
bumping these settings up in here to get some smooth results. Um, there are some more settings in the render settings, but I've left those at default. Again, if you want a deeper dive, go check out Zach's channel and he'll talk more about that. Now, we're not seeing it in this render view here. What you're gonna wanna do is actually do a bucket render and you'll get your results. Um, but that is how you enable Caustics. And I'll quickly just show you a before and after. So this is it with Caustics and this is it without it. So you can really see the difference that it makes. And Redshift handles Caustics really well. Um, it's probably one of the best render engines for it. So definitely helps to make a world of difference. You can see we're getting really colorful Caustics on the rocks here and in the cylinder here. So really powerful tool. I definitely recommend checking Zach's video out for that. So one thing I do want to end this video on is just one additional thing that I do in my glass materials to add a little bit more detail, and that is using the For Now shader. So if we just focus our attention to the sphere in this bottom left corner here, um, I've used this For Now node to basically kind of add some darkness to the edges of your glass object. So let's just output our For Now to the surface and by default, it's going to have use index of refraction enabled. And I'll just quickly explain how it works from what I understand. Um, basically, it takes your object and the angle you're looking at it from, and it will create a black to white fall off based on the angle of that object. So you can see with the sphere, we're getting this black towards the center, and then it's going white towards the outside. Uh, if I just disable use index of refraction, I like to use this curve fall off to kind of affect that fall off and that gradient. Um, so I'll use something like two, and then I'll get a ramp and remap it. So I've inverted it so it's white to gray. And then I'll plug this into the refraction color. And essentially what that's doing is just darkening the edges. So I can change this to like a black, like it was by default. And now it's much darker on these edges. Now, this is great for something like a bottle render where you wanna add a bit more definition and you don't want it to look as washed out. Um, and you can obviously change this to like any color you wanted. So if you wanted like a red rim on your glass, you can do that. And now you have this really nice red finish. Um, so that's just a little detail that I use to add a bit more definition to my glass. So I think that's pretty much everything. Um, this is obviously a very basic tutorial for glass. I'm gonna be bringing out a video in the future about bottle rendering. I'm actually currently working on a couple projects. So once I finish those and I can share them, I might do like a project breakdown on those and really deep dive into glass and some additional things you can do to help really boost realism. I've only done a brief touch on it in today's video, but hopefully you guys found something useful from this video. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and drop a comment down below if you have any questions or if you just wanna show your support. So thanks again for watching guys and I will catch you in the next video. All right, peace.